What's good, everyone? Alex Terrace here, aka the Tradicaster, here with you for a FIBA update. Okay, we're gonna have to check in on Team USA and Team Canada because they got our boys Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson on Team USA, and obviously, of course, RJ Barrett on Team Canada. But before we get into all that, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share all these videos with your friends and your family, your cats and your dogs. And if you can't catch the shows live or catch the premieres, you can always find us on any audio listening platform, whether that be Apple, Spotify, wherever. So make sure to go over to those platforms and go check it out too. And make sure to share those platforms as well. Now, let's get into this. First, let's start off with Team USA because... Team USA was in a nail biter today with Montenegro and woo, not a good day for, for Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart to start off with our boys. Um, you know, they had okay games for what you, for what we've expected them to do on a nightly basis, whether it's wearing the orange and blue uniforms or playing for team USA. It just wasn't a great day for them. Um, for Jalen Brunson, as you see, he only had four points today. Four rebounds, two assists, one steal shot, two for six from the field. Didn't hit his soul, his lone three-pointer. But, you know, the thing with Brunson today is that I thought he was still playing solid defense for a guy not known for his defense, as we saw. He's really taken it up another level during the during this World Cup. I think he's been playing very tough, whether that's on the block, whether that's at the perimeter. He's really doing a good job preventing guys from getting downhill and really attacking the lane uh, as a guard uh, and even fighting around screens very well. I think from a defensive standpoint, Brunson's growth in that regards of the game has been very impressive. And for today was what he did well. I thought he did an okay job getting USA into their sets and running the offense. But scoring-wise, which you need from him, it wasn't there today. But look, it's okay. Everyone can't have a great game, uh, especially in, in the World Cup. You got the depth for these reasons. And as Steve Kerr noted today, you had Hal Burton and Reeves who were doing the job. We'll get to his soundbite a little bit later, but it's okay. Brunson has played well in other games before. It's it's normal for guys to not always be on their A game throughout these entire World Cup matchups, uh, as we're even seeing with Brandon Ingram, right? Guy who went from being a star to the bench unit because he was struggling with the first unit and you know Kerr believes that he should be playing with a more up-tempo pace unit to get him back into rhythm and even today he didn't necessarily have the greatest game I thought he looked a little bit more comfortable with the second unit than he has than with the first unit and speaking about Brandon Ingram going to the bench replacing him one once again is Josh Hart who today you know had an okay game I thought defensively he played well as you look at his stat sheet Four points. He had two rebounds, two assists, two steals from Hart. Went two for three from the field. Very efficient, of course, as we're so accustomed to from Josh Hart. Didn't hit his three-pointer today. But in a game like this where up-tempo play was much needed and, and isolation scoring was also much needed, this didn't call for Josh Hart, even though his defense was solid in the time that he played. So between both he and Brunson, they had their moments. He had Brunson, who had a great finish using, utilizing that footwork we're so accustomed to in the paint against a big. Brunson was able to do that for Josh Hart. Had a nice, beautiful Euro step and transition and finish as well. But outside of those two plays, these guys didn't have that impact that we've seen in other games throughout the World Cup. But for Team USA in general, this was a great... This was... Not great, but it, it really sh it really shows how gritty this team is and how focused they are because when you look at guys like Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Austin Reeves, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., those four guys were really the guys today that really put Team USA in position in the fourth quarter to win this matchup. And let's go to Steve Kerr right now to hear why uh, he went with those guys today so salute to everyone in the chat salute to everyone tuning in let's get to the steve kerr audio right here let's hear what he has to say oh i just felt like like uh both ty and austin were playing great and um you know we went back to to ant and uh, and jj and um you know decided to, to keep these guys on the floor and and it's a good lineup i think we we had this lineup down the stretch against germany if i'm not mistaken and uh 
So it's a, it's a lineup that we trust and that we like, and they were playing well and in a good rhythm, and they, um, you know, they got the job done. And, oh, I just felt like like. Uh, and got the job done. Those guys did, and you can even put Macau Bridges in there for his Swiss Army knife ability to play defense and be a solid shooter. Look, uh, you look at the box scores for these guys. Let's start off with uh, Hal Burton and Austin Reeves, who came off the bench. Hal Burton went four for eight today, got you 10 points, two for six from downtown, got you six assists, two steals, two re- uh, two rebounds. And then for Reeves, this one is comical, guys. It is, it is comical. Reeves went one for two from the field today, but still got 12 points. How did he do that, you ask? How did he get his 12 points? Because he went to the free throw line and had 11 attempts today. He went 9 from 11 from the free throw line. And between both these guys, you have Hal Burton, who's just able to attack out and transition and just create, an, or not just create, but force the defense to have to get out of position to open up easy lanes and, and just easy shots for his teammates like Paolo Bonchero today. There was a nice Bobby Portis rebound, finds Hal Burton attacking transition. Hal Burton drives the lane, throws a nice lob to Paolo Bonchero. Paolo slams it. Uh, I forget if he slams it in or just gets a nice easy layup. He slammed it in. No, he yeah, it was the lob. He, he, he slammed it in. Because Paula had some really good finishes today. But you see stuff like that, and that that's something for today's matchup that was very necessary for USA to win. They had to be able to attack in isolation very well, getting downhill and draw the contact like Austin Reeves was able to do, and attack out in the open space, which Hal Burton, when he's out on the court, as well as Reeves, Ant-Man, all those guys allow this team to do. Same thing with Bridges and even Triple J. So... Kerr made the right decision to go with these guys because once they came in in the first half, these guys were were doing their jobs. They were playing so well. And Brunson and Hart, even though they didn't have great games and they weren't the weren't horrendous today, it just wasn't the effort today that you got from these guys off the bench. So Kerr made the right decision to go with these guys. And look, this was just a nice gritty win for Team USA today. Uh, and as they go on to face Lithuania, on Sunday, and we'll talk a little bit more about that matchup at the end because you'll see. I'll, I'll, hold, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. You guys will see why uh, USA against Team Lithuania is going to be an interesting matchup. But you know, for for Montenegro, what, who kept them in this game today was none other than Nikola Vucevic, and uh, you had Kendrick Perry, the, the 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 guard for Montenegro. These were the two catalysts for. Montenegro for staying in the game and making it as tight as it was. So you just need Team USA to come through and that they did today. That they did. Okay, salute to everyone in salute to everyone in the chat tuning in. Salute to everyone tuning in actually wherever you may be right now. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. You are tuning into KFTV right now with some FIBA updates, checking in on how Team USA and Team Canada is doing uh in the World Cup. So that was Team USA we just went through. Guys, this is tough. This is very tough. We're going to talk about RJ Barrett because I know a lot of you just see the stats. And if you did watch it, you know it wasn't as bad as the stats make it appear to be for RJ today. But Canada had a major loss today to Team Brazil. And this was just shocking. An upset of all upsets for a low-scoring affair. 69-65. to 65. Woof. Tough day for Canada. Um, when you watch this matchup, Brazil had a strategy and they executed to a T. They know Canada is not a good three-point shooting team. So what did Brazil do? They stopped Canada's tempo of being able to run up and down the court and they forced Canada to play the half-court game because they're not a good three-point shooting team. They can't create space like that. And if they can't create space because they can't shoot from behind the arc, what does that mean? That means you have to get downhill. And what without having the three-second violation uh, as you do in the NBA, Brazil was just able to pack the paint and just say, we dare you to come in and, and, and try to score in the middle, which they did. And Brazil was able to come out on top because of that. But when you look at RJ in particular for this, I know this is a Knicks channel, number one fan for the number one channel for the fans, by the fans, KFTV. What your friends and family know about it. All right. Look, RJ's numbers were not great. One for eight today, minus five. You know, you look that he only had four rebounds, one assist, one steal. 
and you're wondering like what's what's going on over here like what what is happening with RJ and the thing is that RJ tried to have the game come to him right as we saw in the first uh game of the World Cup first official game right not the exhibition matches the actual first game uh, against France he was forcing a lot and, and it did his offense just didn't come through he was able to allow the game to come to him in past matchups, and you see that he performs well. He tried that this game. RJ, as we know, is not this guy that can create an isolation, which is what Brazil was forcing uh, Team Canada to do. They said, look, if we're going to lose, let SGA be the guy that beats us single-handedly. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. So for RJ, even though he went one for eight today, I thought he still played defense pretty well. He allowed the game to come to him. Uh, four rebounds, okay. Uh, but in these matchups, even though he tried to allow the game to come to him, and like we know his limitations offensively, it's very tough for me to be harsh on RJ in this game because Brazil just forced the entire Canadian team to play poorly. I mean, the fact that you look at this, look at the numbers, and you see that you have SGA who went eight for eighteen right? Got your 23 points. And then your next leading scorer is Lou Dort off the bench with 17. I mean, that just tells you what you need to know about Team Canada. This is no shade to Lou Dort. I think he's a good player. But if you're telling me Lou Dort's going to be your second best offensive player in a game, you're not winning the game. So for RJ, even though you want more out of him in this matchup, it's tough for him to allow the game to come to him and then there's just not enough space for him to operate. Like he had to take a step back three in the game, not because I think he really wanted to, but because shot clock was winding down. Brazil was just clogging the paint. And it's like, this is the only shot I got. And I have to put the ball up. And that's what he took. So for RJ, he tried today. Obviously you got to do better than getting one for eight and got to figure out how to get through there. But I think based on how Brazil was playing today, like, look, Canada was leading all the way up until the fourth quarter, but then you just look and Canada shot so poor. They went one, they went four for eleven from the field, nine points from the field. Even though they had thirteen points in the fourth quarter, because you got guys getting to the free throw line, Brazil was able to go. Uh, what was it? they had they had fifteen points from the field. They shot they got twenty three points because I think Canada fouled like five times and allowed Brazil to get the additional points to get to twenty three from getting to the free throw line and mucking this game up. So this was just a well-executed game by Brazil. It was a, It's a crucial loss for Canada, don't get me wrong, because now they have to go into the next matchup against Spain, who also lost their matchup. And this is a must-win game uh, for Canada if they want to uh, advance and go to the, and go to the uh, quarterfinals and if they want to qualify for the uh, Paris Olympics, right? That's still on the line. Not just this game alone. Like, they still have to do well. But this is where it's like, for Canada, this is this is, this is is do or die situation for Team Canada right now. Because obviously they want to show that the country is progressing in the world of basketball. Right? You got guys who are in the NBA. You want to show that you can, uh, you can throw out a competitive team. So this is a must-win game against, uh, against Spain for Canada coming up next. So let's see if they can bounce back. But for RJ... Like I said, the performance, it, it's tough to be that harsh because of what Brazil did today. You, I mean, 65 points for Team Canada in, in a matchup is just insane. But it's it's just tough because what Brazil did was truly force Canada to utilize all 24 seconds on offense to get a shot off and then conversely force Canada to play 24 seconds of defense because Brazil was just operating in the half court. Like they had a good exit. They had a good game plan to stop Canada from getting out and running and gunning and attacking in transition, which is what guys like SGA, Dylan Brooks, RJ Barrett guys like to do. So it was just not Canada's day. Let's see if these guys can bounce back though against Spain. All right. So to everyone tuning into KFTV right now for the FIBA update, we're going to the last segment before I get out of here. Uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to share these videos. Make sure to subscribe on all audio listening platforms so you can't catch us live. Or if you can't catch the previews, you can always catch KFTV 
if you're on the go. Okay, so for Team USA, it's going to be the battle against the current and all the former Knicks. For Team USA, current Knicks we know is Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. Former Nick, Bobby Portis. For Team Lithuania, you got, I guess, you could call him, I don't know if you call him current, potential Nick. I guess you can call him current Nick because he's still, Nick still got the, the draft rights to him. Uh, he's just a stash player. Rokas Jokobaitis, who had a phenomenal game to, who had a phenomenal game today. Uh, you have Ignis Brasdakis, Iggy, RJ's boy. Uh, you also have Mendegas Kuzminkas, former Nick, as we all know. And, and non-Nick, but I think Lithuania just has a really good team. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, he's a non-Nick, obviously. But, look, Lithuania, Team USA, you got battle of current Knicks, former Knicks. There's so many Knicks around. This is team, this is Knicks basketball for everybody right now. So everyone can be tuning in to see how good Rokas is, how good uh, Brunson, will, if Brunson will bounce back, I should say, if Josh Hart will bounce back. How will Bobby Portis play? There's a lot of... Knicks fans have a lot of reasons to tune in for this one on Sunday at 8.40 a.m., okay? This one should be a good one. And especially if you want to watch Rokas play because Rokas had quite a day today. He had quite a day. Uh, Shout out to NBA... Shout out to New York basketball. Rokas had... 19 points, team high, shot 6 of 8 from the field, went 3 of 3 from downtown, uh, 6 assists, also team high, and 3 steals. Rokas was just on one today. Absolutely on one. And so you know, absolutely know, we got to be tuning in to see who is this guy. I, I know some, what some of you going to say in the chat and leave in the comments, well, if we lose quickly, is he going to come over? Like, you know, what? when, when is Rokas going to come over? Because he's just hooping right now. He's hooping. He's hooping, hooping. When is Rokas coming through? I don't know. He may never come through. Uh, but I definitely am going to tune in this Sunday to see how he performs because as a draft and stash player that the Knicks have rights to, there's just always been good talk about how good Rokas has been internationally. So to get the chance to see how he performs against Jalen Brunson, our Captain America, as CP would call him. How can we not want to see the matchup between Brunson and Rokas? That is just very fascinating to me. I want to see how both players uh, attack. I just want to see how, I just want to see what happens, man. It, it should be an interesting, it should be an interesting battle. I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. So thank you all for tuning in for the FIBA updates. Okay. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to share once again to all your friends, families, whether it's from the YouTube channel, the audio listening platforms you, you tune into. Make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com. We got some awesome writers over there. All right, Knicks Nation, thank you for tuning in. We out.